Today we will be discussing and demonstrating an accessory motion mobilization of the TMJ, or the temporal mandibular joint. This is for pain reduction and to increase the patient's ability to open their mouth. Specifically, we will be performing an anterior inferior mobilization. This technique is often done for patients with TMD or temporal mandibular dysfunction. The TMJ consists of the mandible, maxilla, and temporal bones. It is a synovial complex biaxial bicondylar joint. The TMJ contains an articular disc which separates it into a superior and inferior joint. The articular disc has an inferior surface, which is concave, and a superior surface, which posteriorly is convex and anteriorly is concave. The articular disc is separated into three regions important in opening. An anterior band, which attaches to the capsule and superior head of the lateral pterygoid, an intermediate band, which is the only articular portion, and a posterior band, which attaches to the retrodiscal lamina. Muscles of the TMJ motion include the suprahyoids, infrahyoids, lateral pterygoids, medial pterygoids, temporalis, and masseter. TMJ biomechanics of opening include the osteokinematics of depression and elevation, with max opening being about 50 millimeters or three knuckles, and functional opening being about 18 millimeters. Arthrokinematics of opening include two phases. The early phase, which is primarily rotation of the condyle on the disc in the inferior joint cavity, and the late phase is primarily an anterior and inferior translation of the condyle on the disc on the articular eminence in the superior cavity. Our treatment will be focusing on the arthrokinematics of the late phase by providing the same anterior and inferior translation. During the early phase of opening, the posterior rotation of the condyle on the disc in the inferior joint cavity stresses the oblique fibers of the lateral temporal mandibular ligament. This helps to initiate the late phase of opening. When the earlier phase of opening is complete, the collateral ligaments become taut to hold the disc against the condyle. With full opening, the retrodiscal lamina is stretched to the anterior position of the disc. During the early phase, the superhyoids and the infrahyoids help to produce the motion. And during the late phase, the lateral pterygoid, specifically the inferior head, and the superhyoids help to produce the motion. Indications for this treatment include if you want to increase your patient's range of motion, decrease their pain, promote muscle relaxation, or improve muscle performance. Absolute contraindications include malignancy, osteomyelitis, osteoporosis, fractures, ligament rupture, and nerve compression. Relative contraindications include osteoarthritis, flu, TJR, and an inability to relax. In a randomized control trial by Ismail et al., they found that the TMJ mobilization, along with exercises of the jaw muscles and massage, led to a significant decrease in pain and significant increase in jaw movement. Also, after treatment, opening was significantly greater than patients who had received only splinting. A systematic review by Meldicott and Harris found that active exercises and manual mobilization alone or in combination may be effective in increasing opening. Programs involving combinations of active exercises, manual therapy, postural correction, and relaxation techniques may decrease pain and impairment as well as increase opening. In order to perform this treatment, you will explain to the patient the purpose of the treatment and what you will be doing. You'll then position the patient in a supine position with their head supporting. Make sure to wash your hands and put on gloves, and then remind the patient that if at any time they feel uncomfortable to either tap the table or tap your arm. Using your hand opposite the TMJ being treated, place the thumb along the bottom row of teeth. You'll then stabilize the patient's head against your body with your other hand at the same time as palpating the TMJ joint. You'll glide the mandible in an anterior and inferior direction. You will continue to do this for 30 seconds and then you will reassess. You can grade this treatment based on how much movement you are providing at the joint. For grade 1, it would be a small oscillating movement carried out in the very beginning of the available range. For grade 2, you would provide large amplitude movements carried out in the mid-range of the joint. For grade 3, Large amplitude movements carried out through the available range of the joint and into resistance. For grade 4, you'd be performing small oscillating movements carried out at the end range and into resistance. From this treatment, you can expect both neurophysiological and mechanical effects. Your neurophysiological effects will include pain relief. This is due to mechanoreceptor inhibition of pain, reflex inhibition of muscle contraction or spasm, and promotion of muscle relaxation. Your mechanical effects will include improved motion within the physiological limits of the joint and improved motion into the range of restriction. Your improved motion within the physiologic limits are due to unloaded movement of the articular surfaces and synovial fluid circulation. Your motion into the range of restriction is seen with grades 3 and 4 and is due to stretching of tissues and breaking of adhesions. In summary, your primary outcomes with grades 1 and 2 mobilization would be a decrease in pain and with grades 3 and 4 would be an increased range of motion. For this technique, the intensity refers to the grade of mobilization being provided and will be dependent on your desired outcomes. 
The frequency for grade 1 and 2 is as needed for pain control, and for grades 3 and 4 it will be as tolerated or until there is no longer any improvements. Initially, this treatment will be performed in th for 30 seconds and then reassessed. You can then continue to mobilize 3 to 5 times, increasing the time as necessary. We will now demonstrate this technique for you. Hello, I'm Ellen Mueller. I'm going to be your physical therapist today. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So I noticed when we were doing your assessment that you aren't able to open your mouth as large as you want to. Can you go ahead and show me? Okay, good. So we're going to do a treatment today of called joint mobilization. This, what this is going to do is help uh, move your TMJ joint, so that's your joint at your jaw, and it'll help with that opening. Okay? Cool. Thanks. So if you can go ahead and lay down. And I'm just going to get some gloves. So with this technique, it's going to require me to place one of my hands inside your mouth to help move that joint. So I just want you at any time, if it becomes uncomfortable, to just tap the table, let me know, and I'll take my hand out. Okay. So can you scoot so that your head's a little closer? Thank you. All right, so if you can just go ahead and open your mouth. I'm gonna palpate the joint line, sticking my hand down the bottom row of your teeth, and I'm just gonna move a little bit, help you relax. Start with the grade one, so this is just a little movement, that not getting to the barrier. Now do this for 30 seconds, just help you relax, taking an anterior, inferior direction. How that feel? Less pain. Okay. So because we have gotten rid of the pain, now I'm going to move into a grade three mobilization. So this one is going to go um, more into that barrier that's um, causing trouble for your opening, and then we'll move from there. So again, just open your mouth. And you're relax. Taking that anterior inferior direction all the way into the barrier and past it. Again, I would do this for 30 seconds and reassess at the end of that. Go ahead and sit up. Uh, reassess if you can open your mouth. Good. And now we see that you've been able to increase the movement at that joint. Thank you.